we are going to be inviting our first speaker of the day, Mr. Mayank Kumar, co-founder and MD Upgrad. Well, an education maven and uh, accomplished entrepreneur, Mayank Kumar is one of the sharpest minds leading in the edtech revolution in India. Mayank is Hi, the co-founder co-founder and managing director of India's largest online higher education company, Upgrad, which within a span of five years has impacted almost one million learners globally. Well, this fireside chat will elaborate on how a future forward brand transforming ambitions. Thank you so much, uh, Mayank, for joining us today. And over to you, Dr. Batra and Mayank. No, thanks, Pavna. Thanks for having me here. Hi, Dr. Batra. How are you? Thank you so much, Mayank. Uh, I'm sure the last eight months have been very busy for you. First of all, how have yeah. been the last eight months, both personally and professionally? Uh, 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 <laughs> professionally, a lot of other things have, uh, uh, as you rightly said in your opening note, uh, that online education and edtech has started to take the center stage. So we jokingly call that violent K through 12. There has been an inflection point. Uh, but for higher education and working professional ed tech ecosystem, it's a it's a good tailwind. Uh, so it's been quite positive overall. Uh, people have taken things quite uh, well towards online education. Uh, personally, uh, we are getting to spend a lot more time with your son at home and with your wife at home, which otherwise was getting missed out. Uh, uh, so overall, uh, uh, I would not complain. I think whatever that happened helped us build a, a larger business, a scale, a, a much more scale business. Uh, but at the same time, gave us some time. Instead of spending time on traffic, you can spend time at home uh, uh, with your family out there. So that's, I mean, overall, it's been quite positive for us. Yes, Mike. And apart from the fact that, you know, you save time. You know, Upgrant was launched many years back, about five years back, Mike? Five years back, correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the acceleration yeah. has happened in the last 10 months. I mean, of a different kind. Of course, it was growing every year. Uh, there was a natural traction. But the... COVID has acted as a chief acceleration officer, a chief digital officer, a chief transformation officer. Tell us, uh, how has Upgrad kind of grown in the last eight months? And what is the future you see for Upgrad and genuinely, uh, you know, education technology becoming mainstream than being adjunct? Yeah, no, I think um, um, there are a lot of questions in that. Um, I think overall... Uh, uh, yeah, we have been, we had been growing at 100% year on year. This year plan was for us to sort of uh, uh, grow at close to 200% plus. Um, uh, with COVID being there, it definitely uh, um, pushed, helped us push the pedal on the accelerator much faster. Uh, uh, it definitely sort of brought online education to the uh, main light. Uh, it brought us a lot of PR coverage because of uh, all those things happening on the COVID ecosystem. Uh, so for us, uh, uh, I think interestingly, this is a good good fact, uh, uh, Dr. Bhatta, that when we started off, uh, March 17th is when we said it's work from home. Uh, and 17th onward, 18th onward, everyone was starting to work from home. Uh, we were at about 600 employees at that point in time. Uh, come today on 2nd of December, we are currently with about 2,200 employees. Um, and that scale up of uh, 3xing, 4xing the number of employees uh, uh, has happened completely remotely. So we joke internally that 80% uh, of Upgrad employees, uh, we haven't seen each other face to face. Uh, so that's been the uh, that's been the challenge from a scale up and the team perspective. Uh, overall, our business has uh, quadrupled uh, in similar period. Uh, we are seeing good traction, good sort of people coming in. Uh, people are taking online education very seriously. Uh, uh, so while the acceleration has happened, adoption has happened. So one of the things that I say that what would have taken perhaps three, four years for online education to get into mainstream uh, happened in three, four months. So that's been a good positive sign overall. Uh, and I think because of that, if you actually notice, uh, there are a lot of great high quality online education companies started coming in uh, in recent past uh, that has opened up, I mean, very, I mean, from an entrepreneurial perspective, very different kind of ecosystem, which otherwise was not very easily accessible. Thank you so much for giving a sense of those numbers. Now, give us a sense of what kind of courses are being taken, what is the kind of people, for us to understand uh, what is the nature of adoption. And, uh, you know, as they say, right now we are compelled to do certain things. You've done remote hiring because 
you don't have a choice uh, but yeah. when we have a choice uh, what will stick and what will go give us a sense of your own understanding from what you see happening in terms of adoption of upgrade sure so i think um, uh, the kind of program that have worked well um, within upgrade uh, i think the the broader theme of data technology those programs definitely do well uh, if you read i mean even today if tcs infosys are coming out with the reports uh, one of the key things that they always put down is what proportion of my revenue is coming through digital uh, projects uh, uh, and in, and the, the the general rule of thumb uh, as you know that in it sector for every employee you generate about 50000 to 70000 dollars per year uh, but if you are digital in nature you generate about 120000 dollars to 150000 dollars per year so infosys is a what about 10 billion dollar revenue company 200000 people at 50000 dollar give you 10 billion dollar but if they have to go to the 20 billion dollar mark uh, with fewer employees digital is the way to go so i think data and technology are therefore very common field that people look for specifically from the indian it indian technology ecosystem but interestingly what we started doing uh, and given um, uh, 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 bw uh, you guys are quite focused on, on on the media and marketing space we are seeing a very strong traction coming from marketing professionals sales professionals trying to learn digital marketing and trying to get sort of mainstream on the digital side uh, we are seeing also equal traction from uh, people who are currently in traditional sectors uh, looking at doing a new age mba uh, so between mba uh, marketing law these programs have suddenly got lot more prominence uh, on, on on the other hand to your second question uh, uh, whether with covid era going away when you have choices how things will pan out see I, my personal take is that look um, as a working profession you don't have any other alternative uh, if you want to do a good uh, masters post graduate program you either quit your job uh, and then take up something uh, otherwise you don't have an option of saying okay i was going to an offline school can i do online tutoring uh, it's unlike that it is you don't have an option you have to do something online is the way to go uh, so we do believe that post the pandemic and post sort of market opening up uh, the positive would be that online would become take more center stage people will accept online and lack of any options offline would mean that the trajectory will continue to grow on the last point that i just want to leave you with uh, uh, dr batra is that uh, while you see a strong tailwind for the education sector online education sector specifically in working profession there's also equally a sense of um uh, confusion in the minds of employees will my job remain today tomorrow day after um and therefore and how committing I myself to stay yeah. relevant in the future yeah correct so while there is a thought of uh, how do i upskill and stay relevant parallelly there is also a thought that hey now if i don't have a job do i invest in any further education so i think those two counter balancing but education is a counter cyclical business so when things go bad education picks up uh, uh, so that's been the journey for us that there is positive of higher adoption there is positive of higher uh, uh, appreciation there is a negative that my job will disappear tomorrow and therefore what do i do uh, and those are the ecosystem uh, aspects that we are currently working with and figuring out how to move from here to the next stage so we do believe online will continue to stay even post pandemic thank you mang you you are so right uh, and you know more and more professionals their learning cycles are getting shortened which okay, means yeah, they're yeah. learning more than once a year i mean earlier it would possibly to make it simple once a year at least it will be twice a year and you learn one more skill also there is this notion for a lot of professionals that they need to create a second source of income so they need to learn a new skill a new um, you know technology based skill that will keep them more relevant now let me Correct. focus you know uh, you know my moniker says business world but i'm doing this role as an exchange for media uh, you know team member uh, and you know we are about brands marketing advertising and exchange for media now upgrade as a brand uh, has been built in the last 5 years what do you think are the attributes of upgrade if we had to you know do the brand positioning in the minds of the learners who have actually adopted upgrade and you know benefited through it what would be the brand attributes of upgrade that would come to the fore yeah 
No, actually, I'll answer that. And maybe what interesting point that you mentioned, uh, I do this uh, experiment every time uh, when someone joins us. Um, so I do induction of about 50, 100 people together. Uh, and I ask them one question. Give me the ratio of number of years of experience that you have and divide by the number of jobs that you have worked on. So if you have 10 years of experience, divide by three, you will get three. Uh, if you have 15 years of experience, divide by two, you will get seven, eight. Um, and I do this consistently. So the usual median number, uh, Dr. Bhatta, that we are getting right now is about two to three. A person stays in a job for two to three years um, and then they shift job or maybe five years in the longer run. Uh, and I ask them the second question, what was the ratio for your parents? Uh, and the answer is usually 30 is to one or 40 is to one. So I think to your point very clearly that while there was a one job for your one career, now there are at least about seven to eight job uh, in the same career span that individuals are going through. And therefore that skilling, constant going back, picking up a new skill is important and getting a additional source of income becomes extremely, extremely relevant for people uh, in the longer run. Coming on the, uh, from an exchange for media perspective as a brand positioning and, and what we look at, see, honestly, we don't feel we are a brand. Uh, uh, we feel that we are creating awareness. Uh, uh, a brand will take a huge amount of time for us to build and, and establish. Uh, uh, but when we go out as awareness, we look at two or three attributes at which we want to sort of stand clearly on. I think one very clearly for us is trust that, uh, I mean, education is a brand that you need to trust uh, uh, because it's a serious investment that you're making uh, and you need to have the trust that, look, this brand will help me out through the entire journey. Uh, the second for me, uh, the word that I always connect upgrade should be equal to success. That if you're doing a program with upgrade, it should lead to some kind of success. You're not doing for fun uh, that you're coming in um, uh, at the end of the day. And third, we do want to give uh, a feeling of uh, celebration slash uh, making our learners feel special. That look, when you're coming in, uh, you will feel special. Uh, wherein we will take you through the entire journey. You will have trust with us. You will find success. But whatever that you do, you should celebrate that. So if a learner has written a nice thesis paper, we celebrate it. If the learner has, there was a learner whose parents were uh, old age and he wrote a, a PhD master thesis note on how to use data science to predict um, uh, uh, ophthalmology problems uh, uh, when you sort of get to old age. Any small things we celebrate uh, so that the person starts feeling very confident because a typical Indian middle class, uh, Dr. Bhatta, that I've noticed is, uh, I mean, I come from that background, is low on confidence. Me too. Man, me too. Yeah. If they're extremely low on confidence and they need to just believe that if they're doing it, they will make it big. And we want to just change that thing. And I call our learners as middle of the middle. That They're not at the top. They're not at the bottom. Within the middle, they're at the middle level. Uh, how do I let them feel confident that, look, you can be as sharp as successful as someone who has gone to, let's say, MIT or Stanford or IITs of the world, because we are you are spending enough time. So I think those three parameters of making them feel special, uh, giving them a sense of success, and building a trustworthy brand, uh, those are things that matter a lot to us in the, in the, in the journey. Well, thank you, man. I remember my meeting with you at ITC Parel four years back. And yeah. clearly, you come a long way uh, from that. And I feel very happy about it. Now, uh, let me talk in the context of brand building. Uh, you primarily use for adoption and uh, sales, if I may say, for go-to-market, use digital in a big way. Whereas a yeah. lot of other funded edutech players are using te television, they're using newspapers, uh, they're using all established mass media and digital to build the brand. Uh, give us a sense of uh, how you're approaching this. No, it's a. Uh, I mean, it's an ongoing debate. If I know the answer, I would be a millionaire right now. <laughs> no you one are has really a billionaire. In. No longer a millionaire. <laughs> I, mean, no I, one... I say I only talk to billionaires. So you know, clearly <laughs> I'm talking to one. But on a serious no, note, no. you've done very well. And you know, we. I'm just saying that you know, uh, yeah. there is a rush out there to be able to capture the market, accelerate, go to, and build a brand. Because yeah, yeah. in education is a lot about credibility. If there's one category, by Correct. the way, there's another rule in education. Old rule may not be true in the new economy. <laughs> in education, brands hardly advertise. In fact, yeah. um, if you look at every major, you know, celebrated institution, they hardly advertise. Yeah, yeah, their yeah, ads yeah. are like you know, <laughs> they're not even sync with the time, so to say. You know, they're very, you know, kind of matter of the fact. 
ads, you know, there are more announcements than that. So clearly, uh, the world has changed. Uh, so how do you see the process yeah. of brand building no. and media? No, it's a very important topic. And I think uh, every edtech founder who's looking at building something, it's an interesting, very important answer that they need to have very clearly on. So we look at three, uh, I mean, all channels very differently. Um, uh, we look at the, the the Googles and the Facebooks of the world as sort of, I mean, the social medias for acquisition, a digital platform for acquisition. Um, uh, uh, but on digital, those medium, I feel is not economically viable uh, in the long run. Um, and on the digital front, uh, we are strongly moving towards creating branded content and brand integration. Uh, so we may co come and work with Exchange for Media or the brand conclave to figure out how do I align my story of success with the brand uh, event that is happening. Uh, so we do a lot of content integration, uh, whether it is uh, YouTube channels or OTT providers. Uh, uh, and interestingly, Dr. Batsa, the moment you do that, Two, three days later, you start seeing your brand searches going up on the system. Uh, more people yeah. start looking for your brand, start looking for your searches, etc. Uh, television is a step function change, is how I see this thing. That if you're at certain level, television will take you to the next level, will drop you at the next level, then you work, 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 then you again go to the next level, and then you drop you at the next level. So television we use is as intermittently to move up uh, onto the ladder uh, uh, because we want parents to know of us spouses to know of us um, uh, and sometimes television helps us quite a lot in that direction but digital overall is extremely extremely relevant for us we look at any kind of content integration uh, we evaluate content on a regular basis uh, uh, that look uh, office setup is working but i think we should look at some kind of a uh, house setup for a new kind of content or a friends talking it uh, Vernacular within content becomes very, very critical. Uh, so if you have noticed last few months or so, we are in uh, Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, uh, Gujarati, Marathi, Bengali sort of channels uh, and then various places. Uh, it is just mind blowing the kind of audience that it opens up, uh, which we haven't sort of had access to. Uh, so we pilot. If a pilot works, we scale uh, and figure out scaling of that aspect. Uh, uh, so. In a way, digital for me at the bottom level is a, in the old context used to be called BTL, below the line marketing. Uh, digital brand integration is mid funnel to create larger awareness. And television is just step change. Uh, if you have to move from level A to level B, uh, that's how sort of we have looked at all three ecosystems come together for us. Thank you. Now, I also want to ask you is going forward in 2022, will your brand building and marketing budgets go up? And if yes, by what proportion? No, I think we uh, we will uh, take our brand building budgets uh, higher uh, uh, to the next level. And the reason is that, as you rightly said, uh, Dr. Rotha, for us, we are making a change in behavior. Uh, I'll give you three, three, four things that, um, A, we are not trained to learn after we finish our undergrad or postgrad program. Um, uh, as for us, uh, uh, I mean, even in a cultural thing, life is broken into four phases. Uh, I mean, after Brahmacharya, you have to go to Grihastha. And there you cannot study. Uh, changing that uh, that age-old behavior requires a sufficient amount of awareness building in the minds of consumer that that suppose, supposedly need to happen. Two, you are also you have never spent as an Indian individual uh, on your own education. Your school was paid by your parents. Your college was perhaps subsidized by the government, and the parents paid for you. And you have never invested in your own education. Um, um, uh, and I, I mean, you would spend enough for your children. Uh, but you would never spend on your own education. And that is a cultural yes, behavior. True. Unlike the U.S. Where, yeah. the, you know, man, you know, what is the size of the student debt in the U.S.? Yeah, a trillion dollar plus, correct? Yeah, yeah it is a trillion dollar plus. Imagine. Denmark. Imagine. So clearly so, what you're saying is supported by data. That culturally yeah. we're different and we need to start spending. Yeah. And hence, there has to be a behavior change that needs to be induced. And television is still correct. a conversation changer or a conversation influencer in a big way while no, it, digital okay. has a role to play newspapers have a role to play ma magazines have a role to play events have a role to play but really mass adoption happens through that and digital is no longer cheap you know man no it's uh, not cheap. look at google <laughs> facebook they clearly you know they're premiumly priced they're not priced uh, at the bottom of the pyramid i have a running joke dr Bata, that uh, look uh, you can fight with these giants uh, 
but they have 10,000 PhDs working out of the valley, uh, and you have 500 people working out of India. So it's an unfair fight. Uh, so no matter how much you fight, uh, it's going to be different. So you have to control your own destiny in your own hands. You're absolutely right. It's a, uh, I mean, you dig your own grave, uh, and in the process of that, it just gets extremely, extremely expensive. So you need to be smart about what you do. Uh, and one last bit that I'll add is that app, uh, e app ecosystem these days have also emerged very strongly. Uh, that uh, a lot of what used to happen was on on, on website, on mobile uh, uh, sites, etc. But app is now becoming an extremely important part of acquisition, where you can hold, retain, engage, and converse with the customer um, and work with them in the longer period of time. But and you know, interesting times are going on, uh, and we need to sort of find our own. Uh, we need to find our own solutions as to how we win this ecosystem out there. Okay, Mank. Uh, Mank, if you had to make three predictions for 2021 in terms of the edutech ecosystem and in terms of upgrade, what would those be? Yeah, no, I think my predictions have uh, been this uh, not similar, but has changing. Uh, but I would say one. Uh, um, EdTech and EduTech will become start becoming household brands. Uh, I'm with all uh, huge respect for what Byju's has done. Uh, it has created a household brand uh, in many many ways. Uh, uh, but I still feel that we have he has only scratched the surface. There's a lot of potential even left there. Uh, so I do believe that on a brand perspective, EduTech will start getting more household conversation, uh, like how Maruti, Tata's, etc. have been from a brand perspective. I think two, uh, we will also see a lot of scrutiny on the edtech space, uh, specifically when it comes to outcomes. I think we have created a market, we are getting behaviors to change. But unless what we do as edtech ecosystem is not leading to meaningful outcomes and changes, things will collapse. And there are multiple examples where people have scaled up. But if outcomes are not happening, um, um, we will all suffer in the process. So I think outcomes will be a very, very strong focus area, irrespective. Any founder who is not focusing on outcome um, will not have a lot of legroom to grow in the long run. As you rightly said, that uh, uh, big universities don't advertise. The results speak for themselves. Uh, and that's, that's the thing that outcomes will come and play a very important role. Uh, and the last one, uh, which I would sort of add to, is uh, 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 beyond just outcomes, there is going to be a very strong focus on personalization of learning. Uh, which has not yet happened. So if I if I come in with slightly weaker section section in terms of a particular topic, I need a very different attention. So for me, household brand, very strong sort of personalization, uh, and focus on outcomes. Those are the three significant changes that we will see in the ecosystem uh, as we go along in 2021. Thank you so much, man. Uh, before I let you go, I want to ask you, you know. Uh, a question that is more on the entrepreneurial side. The last eight months have shown all of us that, uh, you know, you talked about outcomes. Similarly, a lot has changed about entrepreneurship. In your you. own sphere of building up grad, uh, what has changed in Mayank Kumar pre-March and Mayank Kumar post-November? Uh, and what do you think has changed in the consciousness of an entrepreneur in the last eight months? No, I think there's a huge change. Uh, I'm talking about that. Uh, um, you, the moment it happened, you start thinking of the worst case scenarios. Um, and look, I mean, um, you have been a successful entrepreneur. You have built a large, a multiple large brands and businesses. Uh, um, as entrepreneurs, you sometimes get one life, uh, and that one life you have to make it into hundred lives. Uh, so I think uh, from a from an individual perspective, the the thoughts of thinking about absolute extreme. And believing that, look, you have to make it work no matter what happens um, uh, had been a significant, significant shift, uh, a significant, significant transition at an individual level uh, that uh, no matter come what may, we have to make things happen and make things shift. And I think the second thing that I've realized that uh, uh, it's a long game. Uh, disruption comes and go. Um, uh, for me, I, I had not seen 2009 as an entrepreneur. Uh, uh, I'm now seeing... Uh, the current ecosystem as an entrepreneur where things have gone completely down south. Um, I, I genuinely feel that it's a long game. Uh, you have to be in a marathon. Uh, you will get a pedal road climb up uh, where you will realize that all your energy has been sucked away in the marathon track. Uh, but then you also know that there's going to be a downhill after the climbing up of the of the, of the the flyover. 
where you will start regaining energy and running much longer because if you have to do 21 km or 42 km uh, uh, there will be patches where things will go really bad uh, just take it on the chin move on uh, never compromise on uh, giving the best experience to your users and the learner never compromise on getting the best team with you uh, surround yourself with the smarter people uh, and i think you just overcome all these problems uh, relatively easier okay when my last question before i let you go there are two three audience question and i'll take them after my question is you know roni you and fagun uh, you are the pivot around which the company come together roni has a role fagun has a role tell us uh, how do you segregate roles i know you drive the company and yeah. everyone supports you uh, but tell us um, no, a bit a... about how the collaborative dy- nature of an entrepreneurship uh, play works No, no, it's a. Uh, I mean, that's the best part that I can. Th- I mean, be thankful of that I have uh, uh, co-founders that I can truly rely on and um, uh, and sort of divide and conquer. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, not only that, education has got multiple opportunities. Uh, if you start uh, putting your uh, uh, foot in each of these opportunities, then most likely you will end up falling. Uh, so we have taken a very clear approach of divide and conquer. Uh, uh, um while yeah from a, from from an entrep- from a co-founder perspective i'm the managing director i'm running the show but each of us has a very diff- specific carved out role uh, falgun takes care of everything to do with which new product needs to come in which new university needs to be signed off which new areas that we need to venture into so he's the growth lever for us he drives us on the core business things that we need to sort of drive and grow into uh, ronnie on the other hand uh, focuses a lot on non linear areas of growth um, so whether it is mna uh, whether it is uh, uh, expanding internationally uh, whether it is brand because he comes with that background of how to build scale brand etc uh, so he takes care of anything which is non linear outside the core of what we are doing uh, so that object gets ready for the next 5 years uh, while i focus on the core business uh, uh, from a revenue uh, learning product and how the experience will sort of pan out for the learner Uh, so in that way we all complement each other uh, falgun is reading me for uh, two three quarters in advance uh, he preparing the organization what will it will look like in a years time ronnie is preparing the organization what it will look like in a five years time while well, i'm ensuring that by the time they're reading themselves for those two quarters or or five years time frame we don't fall in the process of reaching till that point in time beautifully put i think uh, i keep saying we have to collaborate internally and externally more if we want to survive in this competitive contactless economy uh, yep. so thank you for talking to us man can let me take the two audience question sure. one is outside india does upgrad see a market and which would be upgrad's biggest market outside india so there uh, we have already uh, uh, we are looking at two specific geographies um, uh, one outside india that we are looking at is southeast asia and apac um, so uh, from from indonesia vietnam uh not as much as singapore and hong kong because these are much smaller geographies uh so indonesia vietnam philippines uh, uh and then over a period of time look at southeast asia that's that's one ecosystem of international market the second for us is middle east uh, and eu so the entire emea region of uh, europe middle east and part of africa uh so we have hired one ceo for emea region uh, who will take care of uh, uh, our expansion in middle east and and, and the eu market and another ceo uh, for the southeast asian market or the apac market which is where we will expand our presence into uh, we are looking at exporting our existing product into the us market not creating new product for the us market for the time being so those are the three specific flanks that we have opened up uh, uh, as i said these are things that will help us four five years from now uh, so those are the things that ronnie has been driving internally uh, but those are the specific international geographies that we are looking at beyond india right now my last question before i sign off is uh, you know you talked about big shifts in education and you give on some of them now the edutech space has seen lots of money being invested and too many players it's too crowded at every specialized area is getting crowded yeah. uh, you know what do you have to say to uh, you know people who are still looking to invest in edutech is it early days you all you have said that so clearly it's a very crowded space but it is also early days and yeah. uh, do you necessarily feel funding is what gets you success 
or frugality gets you success how i wish funding would get a success uh, then uh, uh, some other, see i think education is a hard business to build uh, uh, i mean there's no doubts about that it is a business where uh, when you're building it out you are actually letting the individual or their parents or their spouses or their partners to take a significant amount of money and put it into their education um uh, so I, i i i mean i tell everyone of who's joined upgrad that look it comes with serious amount of responsibility if you f up once the person's life and career will get destroyed uh so uh, i do believe that while mon- money and funding can lead you to accelerate the uh, the journey uh it is very important that you focus on the learner experience and the learner journey and the learner outcome uh the moment we lose focus of that uh, uh things start falling uh and look i have been in 2008 9 looked at education closely there were many education listed players around 2008 9 10 that were there they reached to the peak and they had to drop off because the business model as such was not focused on providing outcomes for the learners uh and therefore i do believe that i i also feel i mean i have a personal um, um, pet peeve doctor bata that i never congratulate anyone for fundraise uh, i always send them a message called wish you all the best uh, uh, because whatever fund that you raise it actually sits on the liability side it never sits on the asset side uh, so it is a liability at the end of the day uh, uh, which you have to convert into asset uh, which is what the entrepreneur job is um, and therefore uh, wishing someone for uh, for fundraise to me seems like wishing uh, a runner or a, or a 100 meter race champion for buying a new pair of shoes the race to be baki hai and that's the most important thing that one needs to focus on so i do believe funding can ac- accelerate but you do need to focus on the core uh, and that's where perhaps frugality to that context helps but look i mean it's a large market you have to build the market uh, if you are being frugal it will take much longer time for you to build the market uh, so the right judicious mix of where you want to accelerate but hold the fort uh, become extremely extremely crucial okay and um, i just as a follow up question you know if the big daddy is like geo facebook google decide to enter this space yeah in a yeah. big way i mean geo yeah. has investment in an edutech company and is making some more investments uh, what will what's your comment of course as you said it's a nascent area uh, the pie widen so uh, you being a leading player in it benefit but tell us if uh, uh, the action in the domain hots up uh, what do you think is likely to happen i'd be very surprised if it does not heat up i think i'm i i genuinely feel that it will get heated up much faster um, um than what all of us are imagining because i think amazon has launched an academy business for test prep uh, facebook is looking at something in the english language and test prep space uh, geo with mbi is looking at um, k12 space quite actively uh, Uh, and therefore i always go back and uh, someone asked me this question uh, dr batra in in uh, in the in london in one of the university saying are you are doing this but i also have one of the largest it services company uh, in india who is willing to help me build the entire platform much quickly much faster why do i work with you uh, so i always give the answer that look do you want to work with a real estate developer or do you want to work with an education uh, uh, ecosystem provider um and that education dna uh, i genuinely i mean i feel it's a it takes time and it takes effort to build that out and that's the reason why even in the us they haven't moved uh, that's the reason why even in china they haven't moved uh, um uh, that dna building perhaps mna would be one of the approaches that many will have to take uh, uh, but teaching someone uh, is a fundamentally different ball game uh, and that's the entry barrier to the teaching ecosystem uh, is how i have put it down uh, Uh, all of them have aspirations uh, it's education by the way is one of the few sectors in this country that is easily monetizable with a high contribution margin uh, i mean come to think of it television ke liye we are not willing to pay 500 rupees or 50 rupees per month but for an education you are willing to pay 2 lakh 3 lakh rupees uh, for taking the education so it's a monetizable business it can be built and scaled but you also need to have the right dna of being able to teach own the customer deliver them outcomes because that's what they will be here to pay for thank you so much mank for talking at the india brand can claim uh, you're clearly building a brand for the future it's already a business we wish you luck from exchange okay. for media and business world and we have no doubt that you will be able to build a very sustainable 
uh, and respected business and the brand will be at the forefront of driving that adoption so yeah, we wish no. you luck and uh, all the best man to you fagun and uh, and i mean it's deja vu on 8th december i was attending fagun's uh, wedding reception in bombay last year uh, <laughs> i think the wedding was little earlier in udaipur and the reception was 8th uh, december we six days away from that so wish you yeah. luck man and uh, fagun and ronnie all the best back to you bhavna thank you very much thank you dr basu thank you thank you so much mr kumar and thank you so much dr batra for joining us today